What's up, y'all? Scott Bass here with Paddle the Florida Keys. This is going to be episode three of our three-part Garmin Phoenix uh, tutorial. The first episode, we went over basic setup and, and, and downloading software on your computer. In the second episode, we covered Garmin Connect and how to create a course and follow that course on Garmin Connect. And in this episode, we're going to go over Garmin Explore, which is another app you can download to your phone uh, free from Garmin. And you can also access via a web browser. And then you can load waypoints into your computer, in, into your Phoenix from there. So this is a more advanced class. You may or may not need this, but if you're ever going to go camping somewhere uh, or overnighting on your paddleboard or kayak, and you don't want to, um, and you're not sure exactly where you're going to go, you may want to have some options available. So this will enable you to put a bunch of different campsites in there. So if one, you change your mind, you go off your course, or two, you decide that you need to uh, change your plans midstream, then you'll have other options besides just the one that you set forth in your in your course in, in episode two. So thanks for joining us one more time, and I hope you get something out of this. Okay, now we're going to go into one more little website. It's going to be Garmin Explore. And you'll also want to download that app for your phone because uh, we set stuff up on the, on the uh, web page, but it's easier to transfer it onto your phone. Uh, but uh, I'll show you how to do that. So uh, you get, you're going to get this and you're going to sign in with your Garmin account, of course. Um, I think it's the same account you use for both uh, Garmin and, and the other one. And this handles things a little bit differently. It has collections. So over here on this left-hand side, we have collections. And I have some collections that I created. Um, you want to create one for your Phoenix 6. It may already show up in there. I don't know. Um, actually, you probably have to go up here to plans and devices and add your Phoenix 6 to the devices uh, that are available. Yeah, there's my Phoenix 6 there. So you want to add your Phoenix 6 to the devices that are available. And then you can go in here and it's going to bring your routes. It'll bring your routes from your Phoenix 6 if you want. You can have it do that. But uh, the really powerful part for me is the, is the waypoints. So... What I use this, is, and that's primarily what I use this particular uh, um, program for. So we're going to look at, uh, we'll just look at the Swanee River. There wasn't a lot of waypoints on that. I had 100 waypoints, I guess, on that. But this is the route that I just did on the Swanee River. Is the Swanee 230. And you can see that uh, as you zoom in, these numbers change because that, that means there's four waypoints in that one area, down to two waypoints. So I had put all the... Uh, all the boat ramps in there okay and you can actually add say you wanted to add a new waypoint you just go here like this over to here and you click right there on that area there and you give it a name like test all right and you can change the icon so if it's a boat ramp i have a little boat ramp if it's something dangerous, I got the skull and crossbones right there. Say that's a, a danger area or whatever. You can actually uh, um, save it like that. And it's going to tell you that you need the sync required to go to your to the devices. So, let's see. There it is right there. I really don't want to send it to my phone, so I'm going to delete it. So anyways, you can load up a bunch of web, a uh, bunch of uh, GPS points in here. You can also download, over here you can download or import a GPX file. So I can import that same one that I just did. Um, you get a choice between tracks and routes. I usually import stuff as tracks. And then your imported item to existing collections. Um, or you can in, import it into a new collection. I'm going to say a new collection. This is going to be the test. Oh, no. So I'll, yeah, we'll just say test. All 
add. Oh, okay. So it's trying to add another one, but we don't need. But we only need one. So it's going to be add to new collections. All right. Next. And then you're going to import your file. You can click here. Take that same one, Isla Mirada one, and then hit import. And there's the folder. There's the, there's where I got a bunch of different routes there too. Let's go back here a minute. So over here on my, over here on my uh, collections, I got the test right there if you don't want to see it you can turn it off by hitting the eyeball so that that kind of hides the thing so you can kind of see i got so many routes in here so you can go you can go and turn off all the routes and then you can go down here and just turn on the well, i guess that turns off all of them let's see here if I turn off the uh, Phoenix, so I probably have most of them. So I turn off Phoenix. Zoom in. Still got a bunch of them showing here. Anyways, that's kind of give you an idea of what's going on. And then I can also add waypoints into that folder. So if I want to add waypoints to that collection there, say, see, I already got toilet seat cut in there from another collection. So I can actually just add that. It's already there. You can go in here and you can search for toilet seat. There's toilet seat. There we go. It's a little laggy because I got so many of them in there. So, anyways, that kind of gives you an idea of that. But what you're the main thing you're looking for is these these waypoints. So you can add these waypoints by manual, or you can add them uh, by somebody uh, sending you one. You know, you can add a GPX file. You can move them. You go here and you right click on there. You can, you can actually change the location. You can change the, the icon. You can change the, uh, the collection that it's in. So if you want to show up in your Phoenix, you can click there. If you want to show up in the inReach folder, you can click there. Any one of these other ones, I could have it show up in my test folder if I wanted to. It's gonna save that collection in the test folder. So now if I go back over to test, Says I got one waypoint. There it is. Dove Creek is in my way. Is in my is in my uh, test folder now. So I'm gonna get rid of all that because I really don't need that. And delete that whole collection. And you get the idea. So. Now that we got it in our in our uh, Explore on our computer, we can go to our app on our phone, and we do the same thing. We go to our app on our phone. I got it right here on my phone. Let's see, Explore, right there. Now you see the app there, and now you can sync it up with your. Uh, device. I don't have my device synced right now. Usually what I do is once I get done syncing the device, I'll sign off and get out of it because what happens is uh, it keeps trying to take over your device and it takes control of Garmin Connect. So uh, when you're done, when you're done with your uh, syncing up your device, you just disconnect it and take it right off of there. So that's that's kind of uh, kind of important. It's not not a big deal. 
what'll happen is you'll start, it, it messes with your notifications. So it'll start giving you notifications of everything. And you have to start blocking the notifications from every single uh, program that's trying to notify you of anything. So I hope you enjoyed our three part series in how to set up and use your Garmin watch. Um, I've used these extensively in the field. They've got me out of places where I was completely disoriented. Uh, I've been, I've had situations where I didn't know where the next campsite was, but all I had to do was look on my watch and like, bam, there it is. I've got, come to places where I didn't know which way to turn. I look at my watch and I got my route on there and I know I'll go left here and I'm going to take a right up there. So it's a very powerful tool to keep you from uh, having to get your GPS out and turn it on and, and wait for the wind to blow you around and everything because you can just glance at that watch. That's all it takes. So I think it's uh, for especially for stand up paddlers, but even for kayakers as well. I think it's one of the handiest tools out there for navigation and um, also for tracking and, and keeping up with where you are how fast you went, you know, um, how far it is to the next point that you're going to, uh, all these, all these kind of, uh, uh, all this information is crucial when you're out there paddling and you're trying to, trying to get from point A to point B safely and securely. I really hope you got a lot out of these videos. And if you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up in the, uh, at the bottom down there. Give me a like. Also, if you want to subscribe, you'll get, uh, yeah, you'll be subscribed to our YouTube channel and click the little bell icon there and you'll get updates when we uh, issue uh, more uh, more videos. Uh, in the near future, I plan on doing a full review on my waterproof bags that I use. And uh, you can also look back at some of the other stuff that we've done um, on different gear unpacking from different events and what it takes to, put, to, to participate in some of these longer distance events. And also, uh, there are gear interviews thrown in there as well. And then there's some there's some just some fun stuff from different trips that we've done uh, We just put one up from a, a nice downwind that we had a couple a couple days ago and and uh, Yeah, I hope you uh, hope you get a lot out of it and remember to paddle yourself to a better place today Also, if you have any questions feel free to message me through the uh, comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. If I get a lot of the same question, I'll actually issue another uh, video that addresses some of those questions. I uh, tried to cover everything, but I know I missed a bunch. Um, I've been using this so long that I kind of, it's second nature for me. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I covered everything to get you started and then you'll play around with it and figure it out from there. It is important to do this stuff. You know, just, just make a quick course and follow it that way. When you do go out in the field and you really need to rely on it, you already know how to use it. Don't wait till the last minute to learn something and then try to put it into use uh, when you're in the field. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's trouble. <laughs>